Wow! Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dirty Pat Walsh channel here on YouTube with me, your host, Dirty Pat Walsh. Um, so yeah, more, more about alcoholism and, and, and the stuff like that. Um, I, I used to always say I, I have unconditional love for alcohol because no matter how bad it hurts me, I'll always go back to it. And uh, I did that. You know, it was like Stockholm Syndrome. You know, until until somebody actually told me I was in danger. <laughs> That's what made me quit. Um, but yeah, it's it's funny. You know, um, I, I I noticed there's a, a this this there's a channel that I that I really enjoy called Backcountry. And, uh, He's, he's been watching my videos, I guess, um, which I'm very grateful for. Thanks a lot. If you see this one, uh, big ups to Backcountry. It's an amazing channel. Um, the guy has much more, uh, he's a much better speaker than I am. And uh, he, has, he has a lot more stories to tell than I do, other than... I was just a wasted musician on Hunter Street, <laughs> you know. Um, I mean, you know, my job, I worked at a bar uh, as a cook, you know, I, mostly, like I bartended a bit, but uh, I mainly worked as a cook, you know, I'd cook all day, drink, get off work and just start drinking. I'd be in this bar for 18 hours a day, if not more. Um, this is nuts. And, uh, but yeah, music. Uh, oh yeah, well, what I was going to say about Bad Country is uh, I, I, I watched a video of his this morning and he said uh, most of his demographic who watches his channel are chefs, cooks, and musicians. <laughs> you know? And I fall, I fall in all those categories. So uh, I guess I'm a stereotype. I don't know. But, uh, that's cool. Uh, you know, being a musician, uh, you know, because I, I was... Okay, I played this band. I, I've, I've, I've always had my thumbs in a lot of musical pies kind of thing. Uh, I've been doing a solo uh, act for... Since 1991. I've been doing... Uh, playing in... I've played in tons of like garage rock bands and punk bands and, uh, you know hillbilly hillbilly bands you know folk punk bands uh blues blues acts um you know but I, one one probably the biggest uh musical experience i ever had was i play i used to play harmonica for this uh well, it was like usually between eight and fourteen pieces uh, members in this band. Usually around, usually around a dozen or thirteen, you know. Um, and we would tour like that. Like we would, it was crazy how we did stuff. But uh, but yeah, I was I was a heavy drinking guy uh, during the first few years of the Silver Hearts, and. Uh, you know, when I when I came to the decision that I had to quit, um, I was really afraid because I thought I'm not going to enjoy playing music anymore. You know, because um, I was loaded every time. I, like I used to, I I had this theory. Uh, you know, and I was in. I did a lot of theater and stuff too, right? And so if 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 you were going to be drinking before you perform, before I performed, if I was going to be drinking before I performed, uh, I would rehearse that way. You know, if I knew I was just going to get tanked and, you know, pull out all the stops, uh, you know, I would do that during rehearsal. You know, I'd sit there with a bottle of wild turkey and 
drink it, you know, and rehearse until I was absolutely trashed. And then I'd practice some more, you know, and uh, just to condition myself for the job to do, you know. Um, because if you, if you, if you, I found that if I didn't do that, uh, my performances would suffer greatly. Uh, because I'd only rehearse the song sober and navigating, navigating your instruments is much easier when you're sober. <laughs> so I had to be in good practice. Uh, I love practicing, <laughs> but, uh, Anyhow, um, yeah, so, you know, I'd, uh, I'd be wasted when I, when I hit the stage. Like, we, this one big band, my main musical project, probably in my, other than my solo project, but the main band I played in during my musical career on the road um, was a band called the Silver Hearts. And, we were together. We were together for about twenty years, I think. Uh, I played with the band steady for fifteen of those years. Um, I got fired from the band uh, eventually, along with half of the band. No, you know, this it's it's that's a whole other story. But uh, I didn't get fired because of my drinking. I had to quit drinking. You know, I thought, like, I would, I, like, we held this, we had this gig, it was a weekly gig at a bar downtown, and, uh, you know, free booze was part, that's the thing when you're a musician, free booze is, like, they, you're, it's, it's, it comes at you, <laughs> you know, it's like, you, I, you know, I, I drank for free so much during my time of drinking, you know, um, you know, so this bar, this bar, you know, like the bartenders were kind of cool with me, you know, and, uh, or good, like nice to me. And, uh, you know, so I'd go up and order a triple shot of wild turkey and toss it all back. And if they'd give me a, like a, like in a tumbler a glass about this tall, they'd fill it up to go there with wild turkey. They'd pound it back, you know. And they'd do it. They'd they'd keep pouring me them just to see me do it, you know, because I could do it without gagging or retching or any. I just loved it, you know. I invented a cocktail uh, when I worked at the bar. Um, we we made a we made a it was I don't know it was called the Double O Bar Guide I don't really under, it was a project of one of my other coworkers but we all had everyone who worked at the bar had to uh, create a cocktail uh, with like a double O in it you know like Doom like somebody invented a shot called Doom you know it really wasn't that doomful <laughs> but. Uh, I, I invented a shot called the Dirty Doodah Day, and uh, what it was, it was a, uh, no, I, wild turkey, uh, I love wild turkey bourbon, and uh, that, was, that was one of my drinks of choice, and uh, so the, the way it worked was you'd start off with a triple shot of uh, 101 proof. Uh, wild turkey because it comes in two strengths and, uh, so you start off with the high test one just peel it back and then as a chaser you do another shot the same size of the 80 percent you know <laughs> and uh boy did it put that's like six shots of whiskey you <laughs> know um and it put put the do uh in my dirty days many many a time <laughs> Um, yeah, but, uh, anyway, I was afraid when, when, uh, I quit drinking that I wouldn't enjoy my musical career anymore, you know, uh, I wouldn't enjoy practicing, I wouldn't, wouldn't enjoy performing, uh, I'm a little stuffed up, I'm sorry if I sound weird, um, uh, 
you know, I was really, I was a big fear of mine as a performer, as an artist, you know, because I'd write, I'd write my best songs when I was loaded, you know. Um, anyway, I was wrong, you know. Uh, what I learned is that uh, I actually, you know, because I was actually present and sober now when I was performing, uh, rather than just in the in the gray zone, <laughs> the, the gray out zone, um, or blackout zone. Um, you know, I I was there for it all, and I I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> more uh, sober, uh, more much more than I thought I would. So I learned that that was a good lesson. Um, yeah. I don't, know, I don't know what else I want to talk about. Uh, it's, this video is 11 minutes long anyway. Anyway, that's just another little glimpse into my life as an alcoholic when I drink. And I wanted to, I wanted to shout out uh, Backcountry. Go check them. If, if you're interested in, in the stories of alcoholism and recovery, uh, that's a channel that you definitely want to watch. It's probably the best recovery channel I've, I've seen so far on YouTube, so, anyhow, God bless you all, be well, stay free, and have a wonderful, wonderful day.